Back will some consider doctors as gods since they have the power to save lives. But doctors like the one we are talking about are nothing close to gods. St. John's Hospital witness chaotic scenes today. And it all started because of this baby. Meet 11-month-old Sai Kirin, who was admitted to St. John's Hospital two months ago after the parents saw the baby suffering from a severe bout of diarrhea. The hospital was expected to treat the baby and discharge the kid at the earliest. But now the kid is battling for life. Parents now allege that the doctors have not been giving importance to the child for the last one month or so. Further, they allege that the doctors are covering up their mistakes since the parents have not been allowed to meet the child who is currently undergoing treatment in the ICU. They allege that the hospital is doing all this to increase the bill amount. The parents have already spent 4 lakh rupees on treatment and they owe 2 lakhs more. The parents have sold their property and even jewellery to raise money for the treatment. The parents say that the doctors who initially treated the kid are the ones who are taking care of the child now. There are family friends who are even stating that the child is dead and that is the reason why the parents are not being allowed into the ICU. The doctors on the other hand say that they are doing all they can to save the child. They even went to the extent of saying that they would treat the child further free of cost. Infection, uh, infection, 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 so, last year at the Nali, Mago condition in no serious agile, Iga Solpa, kidney Kuda, Sari Kalsamat Taila, Adaka, dialysis Kuda, start Mandidare. The blame game continues even as the child continues to battle for life. While the parents are refusing to buy the hospital's version, the hospital says that they haven't done anything wrong and are doing all they can to save the child. But who is to be believed is the big question. Maltesh for News 9. And while the blood sample of the child has been sent to Mumbai, it was found out that the child is suffering from acute immunodeficiency. And this caused a huge furor amongst the patients at the St. John's Hospital. The child had been admitted to the hospital for diarrhea. However, now the 11-month-old toddler is battling for his life. Well, uh, for more on this, I'm joined in by uh, Dr. Vijay Joseph from St. John's Hospital. Uh, Dr. Vijay? Yeah. Uh, first of all, could you tell us, could you enlighten us on from uh, on what really the child is suffering from? Um, well, the child uh, basically came in um, in a uh, comatose sick condition from another hospital uh, and had diarrhea with electrolyte imbalance and we found that the child had a clot in the brain. The child had initially recovered from that and uh, but developed another infection and uh, we're just g getting in some blood results which came coming in the official results is suggestive of what is known as a severe combined immunodeficiency condition which is probably why this child has had a had multiple infections and a failure to thrive Okay, we have learnt at this point that a, a report has been sent, a blood test uh, has been sent uh, to Mumbai. Now, what, uh, what does the report say right now? Um, the report, I haven't got the official report, but what we hear is that it probably is suggestive of a severe combined immunodeficiency um, 
condition which is a genetic condition basically where the children have a primary immune deficiency okay so when did you find out that the child had a tumor in his brain because he has been no, not, not a tumor not a tumor blood clot a blood clot when did you find out that, that, was that the initially on admission on admission on admission so it yeah, that is related to the dehydration and the diarrhea that the child had okay and, and for two uh, long months he was treated for what exactly was he treated for so initially he was treated for the dehydration the malnutrition and the clot in the brain mm -hmm. um which he recovered from he was uh, doing well okay but developed another infection uh, which is when we were suspecting that he may and you know also from the fact that he hasn't been um he has been very malnourished okay uh, with his um, uh, contracting infections very easily we were suspecting an immune deficiency or some other situation and his uh, current tests we hear could be um, related to the immune deficiency okay okay fine doctor thank you so much for joining in with all those details And moving on with monsoons fast approaching, it is time for the civic authorities to clear storm water drains across the city. The Palike has started work on the same on war footing. PBMP and its apathy is not something that Bengalurians are not aware of. We have seen numerous instances where this shoddy job has spelled trouble for the common man. And with monsoons fast approaching, maintenance of storm water drains has become the hot topic of discussion. And the first person to take BBMP to task is Jayanagar MLA B. N. Vijay Kumar. He has chided the Palike for its lackadaisical attitude. At the receiving end was Chief Engineer H. S. Anantaswamy. The MLA has asked the Palike to take up clearing of storm water drains immediately. He has also warned the Palike that he would be the first person to sit on a protest post May 16th if the Palike fails to clear the drains. Reacting to this, the Palike Commissioner has stated that there will be no need for a protest. He assured the MLA that he would monitor the work himself. You are a good spot. I am not a good spot. I am a specific spot. I am a good spot. I am a good spot. A giant team of BBMP and Revenue Department can conduct a survey. We will go to the spot. I will come personally. Joining the chorus was Bengaluru DC GC Prakash. The DC stated that the Palaki officials have been given details pertaining to 231 villages on the outskirts of Bengaluru, along with developmental plans for about 80 villages. But despite all this, he states that the Palaki is not ready to take up any work. We have surveyed the storm water drains of Bangalore City. In, in, in Bangalore City, actually con consisting of old uh, 251 villages. And we have, so our survey has been completed in 230 villages, 231 villages. 20 villages we are going to complete within the next 15 days. And as far as uh, the kilometer is concerned, approximately is coming to 650 kilometers that uh, major uh, storm water drains, minor storm water drains all put together. And uh, out of this, we have noticed uh, around uh, encroachments in 230 kilometers. There may be full encroachment or partial encroachment. And uh, right now, we have handed over 84 villages, sketches of 84 villages to the BBMP. Another 84 village sketches are ready, and tomorrow itself they can take. And remaining, we will keep it ready in 15 days. Citizens of Bengaluru can be hopeful of some fast action now that the Palike Commissioner himself has stated that he would supervise the work. It now remains to be seen if the Palike will keep up its promise at least this time around. Promote for News 9, Bengaluru. Bangalore University students have always been a troubled lot, either facing problems in exams or evaluation, but the latest will definitely leave you shocked. Electric wires have come off. There are no tube lights and bulbs to illuminate the area during nights. Toilets and bathrooms are in dilapidated state. Window panes of bathrooms are broken. In fact, the entire structure is in a fragile state. Look at the kitchen. Stoves are rusted and wash basins cannot be used. The visuals we are showing are not of an abandoned building. These are the scenes that will greet you at Shakti Bhavan in Bangalore University campus. This hostel is for the students pursuing graduation and post-graduation courses in physical education. 
It is mandatory for these students to stay in hostel as they are asked to be present in playground for workouts and physical exercises at 6 in the morning. But facilities provided to them are horrendous and awful to say the least. According to students, water for cooking, washing and even for toilet use runs through the same pipe which is rusted beyond identification. Students allege that they are treated much worse than animals. Last time now we were talking about the alternative was to get a lot of money. Three days. Three days to get a lot of money. One day, 40 liters. Nuri pat jana kuri be kondre, yang kuri tira adun nani be doa. Nah, ini le activities nalle workouts mard bandu. Saman ni agai ini bisle gae. Air liter kuri, an liter kuri tena. Anta di bag saman ni abba urugun gae. Air liter andro nuno, nan nalbat liter, nuri pat jana hege kuri be doa. Air liti kuri tawa. Alternative mardi di be ante dera. Adik kaya, nama be kiri do bandu filter itu. Last time filter itu. Atu atara bandu ada filter nado tanda kura kuri ani erga ankula agte tena ante le. The entire hostel structure itself is in a fragile state and it may collapse any time. There are about 120 students in the hostel and they need good food considering that they need more energy since they are pursuing physical education. But leave alone food, they don't even get proper drinking water. When our correspondent spoke to Vice-Chancellor of Bangalore University, he was ready with excuses as always. Semua orang technical committee ni approve lagi deh, works committee kita kondo lagi deh. Works committee ada melalui ke syndicate kita kondo lagi deh. Syndicate band taksna, ini tender mard deh. Tender mard taksna, kita kelas mard deh. Ini inu nida na aku deh. Yang itu priority, top priority yang itu ada bagi nak kerma tak boleh kerma. Bangalore University until recently was considered as the perfect destination for all courses but the hostel facilities provided here are no better than what one can see in jails. Will the concerned people rush to the rescue of the aggrieved and distressed students? Amrita Patil, News24.